Hello, golfers, and welcome to the very first episode of Swing Thoughts, the new Second Swing podcast. And we have a very special guest to kick things off for us, Mr. Kevin Kraft. Uh, those of you who've been watching the YouTube channel know Kevin and been, have been following Kevin a little bit. Um, a lot of club testing we've done so far, yes. and we've got more stuff in the works, so mm -hmm. stay tuned for that. Uh, but of course, this is a brand new concept on the podcast, so we had to get someone pretty legendary to jump <laughs> in and join Only in my own mind. Well, and in my mind too, I think, right? Uh, at least that, that makes two of us. At no, least. there you go. All right. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is fun. So we got we have a whole new studio here. We're, yeah. Um, we're launching this podcast because uh, I just just from my perspective, when I go to the stores, Minneapolis, Minnetonka, I've been to the Dallas store, I've been to the Scottsdale store. Uh, I was at the Columbia store when it first opened up, mm. uh, like three, four years ago now, yeah. I think. Yep. Um, just the the conversations within the store among team members, among the fitters, about whether it's new products, fitting insights, some of the stories from fittings. Um, there's so much good stuff there. And so kind of just want to get that out there and let the people also get some of that. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's there's all kinds of stuff going on at all times. Yeah. So there's it's, it's the golf world. There's plenty to talk about. Yeah, and I, uh, if you follow, uh, or I know you've been posting on Instagram a little bit about your chase for ball speed. So, yes, yes. Uh, you got, we'll have to talk about that eventually. Here yeah, yeah, it's, it's an interesting <laughs> one. I, I'm very interested to see whether I'm going to be able to catch what I'm chasing. Yeah, well, uh, you're off to a good start, I got to say. Uh, it's been fun to watch, and uh, the energy that you bring uh, to that whole chase, and I know I've seen it personally when you had a bit of a session here at Minnetonka mm -hmm. here recently where you set a, a new mark for ball speed that has since been beaten. So Yeah, the, um, the worst thing of all is that if you could see the security camera footage for what I'm doing, like I get in really early <laughs> in the mornings to do these yeah. things, right? So. You know, there's nobody there, and some of my reactions, like I've ended up on the floor, you know, <laughs> just been like, no, <laughs> you know, just like, oh god, the 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 ups and downs yeah. of it, and just like uh, a half a mile an hour away or something. Oh like yeah, that. I yeah. mean, the, the I'm sure the security camp footage is just brilliant. Uh, well, I think we'll have to get a sneak peek of that from the team over there. Maybe <laughs> throw that in the YouTube video or something. But. It would make for a good view, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, but we got a couple things we want to discuss today because. As you said, there's a lot of stuff go and happening yeah. in golf. Um, and I know on our side, we'll start with equipment because that's kind of our thing, right? Yeah. Is golf equipment, uh, club kind fitting, of. et cetera. Uh, yeah, very much our thing. Very much Might be thing. the more appropriate yeah. term. <laughs> but um, so you've been fitting um, at Columbia the last, I guess now it's, we're almost here. We're, we're three months through the season here. We're at, yeah. Through 2023. Um, yeah. Uh, so I don't, you know, we'll start with drivers because I think people like drivers. Uh, people like to oh. hit, hit bombs. Yes. Uh, so. Or attempt a lot of new bombs. drivers this year, though. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good year for if you're a player that needs a new driver this year. It's a really good year for that. It's actually a great year for yeah. drivers. Yeah. Um, you know, anytime Ping launches something new, uh, you know that it's going to be it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Um, and what Callaway's brought to the brought to the table this year, um, Stealth Two's an improvement over over last year's. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's gotten better, uh, and that's that's fun. Right. And I think we've noticed that it's not. There's, it, it's not always an improvement sometimes. No. You know, there are times where it's a, it's a step back or sometimes where things are pretty stagnant and yeah. it might just be a new name that's yeah. engraved on the club head. Yeah. Um, but I think, and we also can't forget about TSR. Um, last oh, for fall, sure, which, yeah. yeah. You know, depending on where you are, to me, it still qualifies as a 2023 launch. It, it absolutely but, is, um, it absolutely they've is. They've been, I know that's been a really good one. And I yeah. know there's a video coming up uh, soon on the YouTube channel. Um, where I, about the last time you were here, mm -hmm. we tested the TSR2 versus the G430 LST, yes. which might not initially sound like the proper head-to-head -head test, if you will, but that was one that opened my eyes but to kind is. of, yeah, yeah, the way both of those drivers actually play a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you can't forget Titleist in this discussion. I mean, right. just because they launched first you know, right. back in the fall, uh, they really set the bar extremely high yeah. for everybody else. Uh, and I think overall, you know, they've, most companies have pretty well been up to the task. Yeah. So, um, but the, the TS line, TSR line is is awfully good. Do you have like a, so let's, you know, let's say you're in the, if you were to kind of quantify all the fittings that you've had for a driver, is there one that's maybe leading the pack or maybe one that's asked for the most from people or is it pretty competitive out there? It's competitive though, I would say Titleist and Callaway are probably the two okay. leaders right now. Interesting. Um, it's still early days, right. so I'm, it's just kind of a, a little bit of a trend, you know, yeah. one direction. Um, Titleist really has not slowed down. They haven't lost any momentum coming yeah. from, you know, from the fall, um, and they continue it continues to put up, 
you know, exceptionally good numbers. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Paradigm got off to a great start on the PGA oh, Tour. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. The John Rahm has definitely helped that a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it helps having, um, you know, John Rahm as, yeah. uh, on your staff. But. Yeah, but at one point they were, they'd won six out of nine. Yeah. So, uh, you know, really mm -hmm. fast start for them. They've got to be really happy over there. Right. Um, so that's kind of the, the two trends right now, you know, Titleist and, and, sure. and Callaway. But um, Ping's doing very well. Uh, Cobra's holding its own. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stealth 2 is doing okay. So, right. Yeah. Right. And then I think for me, I think it's, you mentioned the Titleist thing and I just wanted to speak more to that too because it's always interesting to look at the release dates of these manufacturers mm -hmm. and how so many of them, you know, the, the specifically Callaway, TaylorMade, Cobra, I mean, they go basically one year cycle with, yep. um, you know, like the Aerojet is going to be up this year and then they'll yeah. probably have something new next year. Yep. Um, and same with Stealth 2, same with Paradigm, you know, this will be kind of its main year to be the new product. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, Titleist, Ping, uh, Strixon, uh, I guess Mizuno is probably that one year as of right now as well. But those those other brands, you know, the Strixons, the Pings, the Titleist, they go every two years sometimes yeah. or maybe even more depending on industry trends and, and situations and whatnot. So it's always cool when it all times up right and you get yeah. Titleist this year, you get Ping this year, all with those other two brands as well. Yeah. I. <laughs> With Callaway running a second year with Rogue right. this year, um, I'm wondering if they're not trying to kind of push toward that two-year life yeah. cycle. But it's got to be hard as engineers, you know, coming up with with the next great thing right. year over year. My goodness, yeah, you know, that's 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 asking a lot, I think. So well, and it's part of because there are limitations on at least the ball speed as of right now with yeah. the driver. Like the ball, the ball can only jump so fast yep. off the face right now yeah. and so the only advancements being made really are where it might be adjustability or it might be ball speed off the center of the face is yep. really what these brands are chasing and you I mean obviously we're seeing so much of that in every model now yeah you hit a driver from today 2023 compared to one maybe six seven years ago hit if you miss hits there it's world the difference yeah um it's pushing towards what bryson dechambeau really wants which is a golf yeah. club that, that you can hit it anywhere on the face and it does the exact same thing <laughs> i don't know if that's quite <laughs> probably quite yet. <laughs> probably not quite um we may be a ways off from that one or no it may never actually happen uh, uh, yeah but. i mean uh, yeah you, you get into science as bryson has and you, you know you that part is not attainable um what he says even though uh, maybe as a scientist one day he will learn that. Um, maybe. But uh, in terms of, I want to move into the Fairwoods Woods because mm -hmm. when you were here the first time uh, to film videos, which would have been right before uh, the new year, yep. we had kind of the new products to test out and hit. And the Stealth 2 Plus Fairy Wood mm -hmm. really grabbed your attention mm -hmm. and it grabbed mine because of that 50 gram weight. And yeah. so I wanted to ask about I mean, how many fittings you've done with it and if people have been, you know, has that been received well? Because I've gotten, you know, the feedback on the video has been, it, it looks like it could be a great tool, but also yep. like it does look like a club that it's going to just collect dirt in that, <laughs> it does. in that little it does flat on like the bottom of the club. Dirt. Yeah. Um, it's been pretty well received, a uh, little bit of an uptick lately. Okay. Um, I've kind of seen Callaway being the really? the kind of the predominant okay. fairway wood so far. Uh, they gave us adjustability right, again, right? right? And right. it's always a happy thing when we get adjustability mm -hmm. in fairway woods. Um, Taylor made having that, Titleist having that, uh, mm -hmm. very nice, right? right. So um, the Paradigm family is doing very very well in the fairway woods. Yeah. Um, Stealth's been Stealth Two's been good, both in the adjustable, you know, the the plus version and the and the regular. I've done quite a bit with the regular actually. Okay. Um, selling a lot of seven woods. Yeah, that, a lot of that makes woods. sense. That's the it trend. Is, it is the it is the hot item. And I think it I think it would actually surprise maybe I don't know I I, I know the die hard kind of uh, you know very in, in tune fans of golf probably know that there's some seven woods being in play on, mm -hmm. on tour and. Yeah. You know, of course, on the LPGA Tour, but also on the PGA Tour now, again, a lot of seven woods. Um, but I think maybe the more casual fan that might be tuning in might not know that seven woods are making a, a they are surging up the, the count in terms of clubs in the bag yeah. on tour. And for good reason, it's just you get a higher launch, you get a little bit more forgiveness maybe. Um, 
and you can land that ball softly on the green yep. when you're going for that long, I guess for the tour guys, probably 230 to yeah. 250 shot, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, it's a lot easier to hit that than say a four iron. Yeah, absolutely. Or even, you know, even potentially than a four hybrid. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in our fitting bays, it's, it's mainly about trajectory. Uh, or maybe a little more ball speed, getting a little more, a right. little more distance. Um, but I've I've done a lot of a lot of seven woods so far right. this year. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I mean even like nine woods might become, you might see yeah. more of that uh, available with the manufacturers. I know yeah. there's still some of that depending on the brand. Um, yeah, I think but, we have a stiff flex nine wood in the in yeah. the fitting matrix. So yeah, that's, so that's fun. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I mean that's one that I could see myself playing even a little bit depending on again the course and the conditions. Yeah. And, um, on a calm day, I mean, a high loft at Fairywood is anybody's best friend. So, yeah. um, now in terms of, I kind of wanted to jump to irons because mm -hmm. there's a, some of the, some of the companies or some of the brands went and released their new kind of game improvement model mm -hmm. that, you know, like the Aerojet, uh, Paradigm has the, the X and the standard, things like that. But, um, is there one that jumps out at you this year, uh, of the kind of the new irons that have been released in 2023, whether it's, it doesn't have to be a certain category of iron, just anything out there that's been a kind of a sleeper for you that didn't really expect to do as well as it is? Um, not really sleepers. I mean, Mizuno's been just killing it this yeah. year. Uh, they're the 923 hot metals and forged have just been great yeah. carrying on, you know, pushing on from where they were before. Um, you know, Callaway, the, the paradigm, you know, it's a little bit on the expensive side, you know, mm -hmm. but numbers are really good um it's a it's a really good looking iron a uh, little less chunky on the top than right. than than the rogue is yeah, yeah. so it's you know visually it's more appealing mm -hmm. um you know stealth is a holdover uh stealth hd yeah. is is an interesting golf club it's it produced some very good numbers okay and some good trajectories for people and there's a lot of people out there that need that so yeah. it's a it's a purpose-built machine and it's a good machine right. Yeah, I think there's, I appreciate what some of the, the brands are doing now and, and going for that player that might not have the swing speed or might not have, um, I guess, the, the spin to hit the stronger lot of game improvement yeah. irons out there. So you got yep. the Stealth HD, you have um, Mizuno's kind of HL model in yep. their 923s yep. where you have extra loft maybe or mm -hmm. with the HD, especially that kind of shallow face that can get that ball up in the air a little bit. Yep. So you're seeing that, I think a lot of these companies are realizing, hey, 27 degrees or whatever it might be is very strong for yeah. a game improvement iron. And a lot of players, it actually doesn't work for them. Yeah. And so they need something, another option, an alternative that works for those players to give them ball speed still, but also make sure that ball's up in the air long enough. Absolutely. And then there's also always ping. So right. ping's always been my go-to for, for, tra for trajectory. Yeah. Um, ping just gets the ball up in the air. Right. So, Plus, you got the power spec and the retro spec. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure you've taken advantage of several times. Yeah, and retro specs actually great for for those that do need a little bit more height, do need a little bit more spin. Yeah. You don't have to sacrifice a ton of distance. Yeah. But everybody focuses on carry, right? In an iron fitting, everybody wants to see oh, how far can can it go. Yeah. But I want height, spin, and landing angle. Like mm -hmm. that's that's where I'm going to focus right. all my energy because if I get a golf club that, that goes 15 yards further for you, but it's coming in and it's going to land in the middle of the green and shoot over the back into whatever's back there, I'm not doing you a favor. Yep. So yeah, yeah that's not helping anybody. It's actually no, probably hurting. It's I definitely mean, hurting. You, yeah. you might get your extra 15 yards like you mentioned, but yeah. what's it? How does it help you if it's over the green? Exactly. You know, instead of on the green, yeah. and you're putting for a birdie or trying to make an easy par. Yeah. So uh, there's, that's just always a category that it's, I think that one in particular, the last four to five years has really changed just because of the, the loft trend. Uh, yeah, it has just, to. It's just the need to make sure that ball gets up in the air when you have lofts that strong. Um, and a lot of these, I mean, the companies are doing it. They're giving mm -hmm. people enough launch. Um, I think just there's, there is some concern on the kind of the more diehard golfers out there mm -hmm. that they see that loft, they're like, I, I can't hit that. So, I try to get my my clients to not worry about what the lofts are, yeah. um, because it literally, if if I had if I had it exactly the way I'd want it, my golf club would say, "Hey, this is your 170 club." Yeah, right. So it, it wouldn't have a number on it. It would right. tell me how far it goes. As long as each tool in the shed has a purpose, right. it doesn't really matter what it is. So you know, we're looking for a hundred yard club, a hundred and 12 yard club, 124 yard club, 136 yard club, right? So as long as the gapping's good right. and, and 
you know, maybe we have to do a little bit of tweaking after the fact to make sure that the gapping's mm -hmm. good. No problem. Right. Um, but as long as that gapping's good and we're getting good control dynamic numbers, it really doesn't matter what the right. what the golf club actually is. Right. Um, yeah, because that's that's the especially when you get to the the better players, uh, that obviously matters a ton. Uh, yeah. Someone like you, you're, you mean you're you're worried about a number that the ball is going to carry to. You're not yeah. really worried about a ton else. Um, obviously, trajectory and stuff matters when you get into the wind and everything yes. like that. But um, that's the end of the day. Is especially with irons, I think there is this push for distance and distance and more distance. Yeah. But if it's not a consistent distance or if it's not the right landing angle and not landing properly on the green, then it's no good distance. Yeah, it's exactly. Distance that is hurting you. So, yeah. Um, that's just, uh, I think that's an update on, you know, where irons are in that category. And you're seeing it more with players' distance a little bit. But uh, either way, like, there's er, in that category, there's so many good options. Um, there are. Players' distance especially. Yep. There's more new ones this year. Uh, same with the players. You kind of leak into them to kind of the quote unquote players cavity category. Yep. So many good ones. Yeah. Um, I know you've got a new set in the bag this year, I think, unless you changed it since the last time we talked. But So I might have. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> might, might have happened. Um, Cobra King. Yep. At least that's what you had last time. Yes. Um, I had the King Tours in the bag last time I was here. I like the way that they have like put together three sets of irons in that sort of player's space. Yeah. And they can all be easily comboed together. I don't think you see, you, it's happened before, but having three separate models in that space work together so seamlessly, it seems like, yeah. um, is I think rare in the, in, in the market. Mizuno right did it with the pro line. Yeah. You know, you get the 221, 223, mm -hmm. and 225. Um, but there's not, well, some, my brain is failing me. There's not I another tri-combo. You could, you could argue like TaylorMade with the CBMB and the, um, P770, but that's a yeah. completely different build. It's, it is. It's like a hollow body iron yeah. 770. So that, I think that to me is the closest thing that really yeah. comes to yeah. something like this. We're, we're, we're anxiously awaiting what Callaway is going to drop for a new Apex line. Yeah, that's you true. Know, DCB was the holdover this year, and then right. uh, so we'll see what, what, the new, what the new line looks like. Yeah, and the other thing too is Titleist. Has yeah. going to have, yep. I think, yep. um, a new set of irons this year. So that'll I've be seen. I've seen pictures of the new 400. Oh, the, the new, new 400. 400 looks for Titleist the way this uh, Strixon ZX4 looks like the new one compared to the old one. So it's a lot slimmer. It looks and like it I, have, looks, I haven't had it in hand, okay. but the visual, the images that I have seen make it look like a lot sleeker golf club. That is going to be a big win for them. I it, think. Yes. I mean, if I, I remember so. the the old four the cur well, current four hundred, yeah. the one that's out now, the four hundred is yeah. a Big hollow shovel. Yes, I think, and I don't it goes know. Goes very, very. That might far. be a critical way of putting it. I averaged 190 yards of carry with the seven iron in my testing. Yeah, that's that's far. It's 20 yards longer than my normal. That's far. It's a beast. Um, that's uh, that is a beast. Yeah. Um, and then so the, it's good to hear that you got something else coming. So mm -hmm. they're gonna have a. I don't know if they're gonna they're gonna keep the T the T series nomenclature. Then maybe I believe so. Maybe I believe so. Yeah. Maybe I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Um, I'm always anxiously awaiting for new Titleist stuff. Um, we got the we got mm -hmm. the woods last year. We get irons this year. That'd be fantastic. Yep. Um, so moving on, we're talking about equipment. Um, we have to kind of address a. Eh, it's, I don't know if it's an elephant in the room currently, but it's a. Uh, it's taking up space in the room, and that okay. is the the ball um, ah. rule proposal sent by the or I guess sent out by the USGA and RNA, yeah. um, the governing bodies that that be. So uh, this has been. And I've heard all the perspectives I think I need to hear on it. So yeah. um, I guess you can correct me if anything I say here is wrong. But for those who don't know and are, are under, aren't aware, there is a proposal to roll the ball back um, mm -hmm. for quote unquote elite level play, which the USG and RNA did not define exactly what that is. Uh, but I, I imagine that they were going for you know PGA Tour, um, basically any professional golf, um, LPGA Tour, and then I would imagine like USGA championships, you know, amateur championships, things like that. Um, but it really was never defined. Uh, yeah. but basically, the idea is they're going to refine the testing circumstances to identify what is a valid golf ball and what isn't in competition. And essentially, uh, it's going to, you know, hurt your distance by about ten percent, five to ten percent, uh, with the driver, give or take, how far you hit the ball. So, um, 
I don't know. I mean, that's it's kind of, it, it would be a big change. It wouldn't go in effect until I think 2026. Yeah. So it's there's still some time yet, but that's it's a lot to I guess um, understand and, and grasp as a as a golfer that might be at that level of playing pro golf mm -hmm. like you, um, or maybe you're one of those elite amateurs that's a plus handicap trying to compete in these events. It's a lot to it's a lot to uh, digest. Well, as you and I were discussing earlier, it seems like it's going to potentially filter down to uh, anybody that's able to make the ball go forward. Um, yeah. And I, I find that a little frustrating. I mean, it's, it's I don't know. I, I've got some opinions on it. I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> I think it's absolutely ridiculous. It's, but, um, and because I think there is an argument out there um, that distance is becoming so much a focal point of golf and i know the the idea behind it is to try to make sure golf courses don't become obsolete um which i think is a fair point for a very select number of courses that might be in a rotation for large championships out in the golf world um but i guess on my view i just really wonder how this would go into effect for someone i, I don't know if i quite fall into this category because i'm not quite an elite amateur i'm a better golfer with a kind of a low to zero, almost zero handicap. But I, there are people that are plus two, plus three, amateur level players that like to compete in qualifiers for large mm -hmm. USGA events, mm -hmm. but also like to play the kind of recreational golf with friends and maybe play games and try to win those sure. games. And sure. if you're losing 15 to 20 yards of, of distance by playing a different ball, you're probably not gonna wanna play that ball. So uh, I, I'm just, it's a whole thing, um, I guess. Um, I think they should roll the players back. I think they should make it so that nobody over five foot seven can play golf anymore. Um, Darn. There are, there are to be no, <laughs> you, can't have, uh, you can't have mental coaches. You can't have fitness trainers. We have to go back to the days where, uh, like when I was coming through when we ate donuts and drank Mountain Dew. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you couldn't, do, you couldn't do speed sticks. Yeah. You just roll the players back. If, you want, you well, want, you want, if, golf, if golf's gotten too far, let's roll the players back. You know, I don't hate that because here's the deal. I don't have a spin coach. I don't have a fitness coach. I don't either. I don't have um, any dietary coach by any means. Uh, but we are both, like we are both would, over 5'7", though. That's true. So, I'd have to you know. know. I'd have to maybe go through a procedure yeah. to drop my height a little bit to <laughs> play competitive golf. The thing is, people want people want to play the balls the pros play. Yeah. Right. You're going to create potentially if this were to actually go through a whole change in the paradigm. Nice. To where yeah, where <laughs> uh, where people don't want to play the balls that pros play. Yeah. Like, why would you want to play something that's a, an, an inferior ball? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I just I. I can't imagine that there aren't just warning bells and sirens going off in all these manufacturers, even though we're potentially three years out from right, this, right? right? We're talking about not just changing the golf ball. We're talking about having to change the way the equipment is made too, mm -hmm. to, in order to make these new golf balls work as well as possible. Right. Because all of the, the I mean, shafts, club yeah. heads are all designed right now for yeah. what is the, the I guess the popular premium ball out there is the Pro V1 and Pro V1X, yeah. but comparable golf balls to that from your favorite brand of choice, yeah. that's what these clubs are designed for, um, yeah. is those golf balls. And if you change that, um, I think there may or may not be a test uh, that we filmed that will be up on the YouTube channel that might show this a little bit, but it, things are gonna fly differently, perform differently, yep. and um, it's going to, I think there's a, there's a large can of worms being opened, I think. Yeah. In the equipment side of things, and that doesn't really even touch the fact of where's that line going to be drawn in com competition out there. Whether you're a junior golfer, maybe you're a teenager right now, mm -hmm. might be listening to this, and um, you're wondering how this is going to affect you. You might be preparing to play a new golf ball uh, yeah. very soon because yeah. there's there's not really a, a, a good way to draw that line to me. So between the equipment, between that. I'm very interested to see how this whole thing plays out. If they maybe modify something, if they change it, if they don't ro roll out at all, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I would be. It would be just so exciting to watch Rory try and drive greens and and 
come up short all the time. That would be so exciting to watch. <laughs> and nobody would ever clear the clear the pond on set on 13 at the Austin Country right. Club, even though that tournament's going away, which is really sad because yeah. it's such a great venue, such a great mm -hmm. match play venue. It is, Man, it is. so good. But um, yeah, I mean, I think they're just, they've lost sight of the fact that this is a entertainment business, right? Yeah. We play golf for entertainment. We play golf for fun. We're supposed to be having fun. Yeah. And golf is hard. It is. <laughs> well, let's make it harder. <laughs> let's make it more challenging, more yeah. difficult. You know, let's 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 make everybody play one iron through lob wedge. No more drivers, just one iron uh, through lob wedge. How's that? Hey, that that's a good point. We'll have a resurgence of one irons and two irons. Y with potentially the new, with this, so. With this uh, new competition ball. Golly, I hope not. <laughs> Boy, I don't, uh, every time I look at an old one iron, it just gives me the shivers. Yeah, well, yeah. you're not alone there. Uh, <laughs> So I used that, to love one. I had a zero iron when I was in college. It was Tommy Armour had a zero 845 iron? zero iron. Yeah. What was the loft on that thing? I have no idea. I, think I guess it's like probably 16, maybe probably something a in that name. Two iron and three iron today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but on that side, the equipment side of it, too, another piece to you, you, you hinted at it a little bit, but just the way right now that uh, you know customers or viewers of our stuff are being taught about new equipment mm -hmm. is that. This is how the pros do it, you know, because yeah. they get the first testing, and that's kind of some of the messaging that the manufacturers send out. Is yeah. well, I know the one big one um, that we heard from Titleist <clears throat> in the new TSR drivers was um, how the TSR two was smaller, mm -hmm. and they refined that shape a little bit to make it more player friendly. Big time. And Chesson Hadley was one of their their staffers and actually tested t was testing out the new TSR drivers, and he put the TSR two in the bag, thinking it was the three, yeah, because it was more compact. Um, didn't even realize until he was warming up for an event that, oh, this is actually a two um, because of how, you know, things like that, that yeah. um, now the golfers will never know, um, at least with the ball, because yeah. um, it's going to be completely different, obviously, and they're not going to want to play it. An amateur player is not going to want to play a ball that limits their distance if they might not be the longest hitter already. So yeah. um, it's a big thing. We'll, we'll keep tabs yeah, on it. Uh, we've, um, got, we've got quite a, quite a long time to... Right digest more and come up with yeah. more silly ideas like making everybody play one iron yeah. through lob wedge and I do, that kind of stuff. But I do respect the USGA and RNA kind of setting this out with the three year period so they can be like, all right, we'll get this out. We'll see what the initial reaction is. We'll gather some feedback and then maybe we'll just not do something in 2026 if enough is out there. We can hope. Yeah. We but, can hope. Um, so we have you here and we've gotten your, your hot takes on things Ooh. a little bit, yeah. but um, we got to talk about you as a player. Um, I know we had some stuff on the channel previously on the YouTube channel, kind of following your, your path a little bit, trying yeah. to become, uh, well, get the, the card for the PGA Tour champions. I wouldn't say relevant. <laughs> You've played in two U.S. Senior Opens. Um, it's been an adventure, I, I think you would say. It has, um, yeah. And for those who don't know or maybe didn't see any of the kind of what the buzz is all about stuff on our YouTube channel, um, but, I mean, Kevin has been kind of all through the golf professional landscape, really, um, in your past. And now the, the next goal kind of is that PGA Tour champions and, yeah. and qualifying for some senior events. Yeah. Um, you have played in the last two U.S. Senior Opens. So, yeah, that's been a um, trip. So I guess in terms of 2023, where are you at, how you feel about the game, and you know, what are the big events on your schedule this year? So um, overall, I feel pretty good. I've been, you know, been documented. I've been doing some speed training mm -hmm. and trying to get some some extra speed post fifty, um, <laughs> and it's actually been working. So it's kind of cool. I mean, I always tell clients, you know, as, as we get older, we tend not to get faster, but I'm kind of reversing yeah, you're, that you're, just a little bit. Yeah, right? you're the yeah you're you're, you're bucking that I'm, trend a little I'm, bit. Yeah, I'm clawing. I'm clawing at it. I just ultimately, I don't want to lose distance. Right. right. So unless it's forced on me with a golf ball. Um, right. But uh, yeah, season looks pretty good. Um, wife and I are about to move uh, back to Pennsylvania, which actually adds to my tournament schedule because okay. um, I can play the Pennsylvania Senior and uh, Pennsylvania okay. Open. Uh, I'm exempt since I won the Open yeah. in 18, so that's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to get into the PGA program again. It's been a few years. Okay. Uh, last time I was in a job where I was working 60 plus hours a week and literally had no time to get any of the work that needs to be done right. done. Right, right, sure. So I got out. I basically got a hold of the PGA and said, I just want a complete refresh. I'm going to do it right this time. And so they're like, yeah, cool, fill this out. So uh, I'm going to get back in. Nice. So it's going to give me the opportunity to play some of, some of the PGA section events. 
but also because I'll be in the section, I can play in Maryland Open, Maryland Senior, Virginia okay. Open, Virginia Senior. I'll go back up to Massachusetts, do the Massachusetts Open qualifier again. Uh, I've gotten in every time I've gone so far. Uh, I love the golf course at Country Club of Pittsfield. It's mm -hmm. a fun track, so have a good feel uh, sure. getting into that. And then I've got US Open uh, locals this year. New venue for me this year. Um, I went and was I put up a great round last year. And we had a lot of wind in the morning and then it laid down in the afternoon. And oh, everybody sure. that got through got through in the afternoon. Classic. Right? Yeah, it's just great. <laughs> um, so uh, they didn't go back. And it's unfortunate. I, I really enjoyed the Federal Club mm. last year down in Glen Allen, Virginia. So this year we've got, I'm going up to Rolling Green. Okay. Uh, up in PA. Played the PA Open there in 2015. Finished fourth. So I got some good feels about that one. Uh, would love to get through the the locals and throw myself into a, another sectional i feel like i'm more capable now than i've right. i've been all along right, right. As, I've, as i've gone through this um whether it's better in the brain or better in the body i don't know but i just feel more positive about it um, there you go. well and that's then, a good thing it is a good thing yeah that's absolutely thing. and then obviously the the u.s senior open qualifiers at the same place it's been the last couple of years right. and um, you've you've done well there. So. I have, and I have to go in with some some realistic expectations, right? I mean, I love this golf course, the Cascades at at, uh, at the Homestead down in in Hot Springs, uh, Virginia is just it's such a magical place. Like I absolutely love it. No cell service whatsoever, but I absolutely <laughs> love it. Maybe and that's why it's magical. Maybe might be, and uh, so I know it's going to get harder and harder to get through these things, but I. You know, I, I yeah. feel like if I go down there and play my game, I'll have as good a shot as anybody. Right. So if I get in, great. If I don't, then, you know, I can't be too disappointed. I've had a pretty sure. pretty good run in the last couple of years. So. Well, yeah, and it's been, it's been fun to watch you. And I remember a few, the viewers or listeners haven't heard about the story with the hotel at the U.S. Senior Open. Oh, was, goodness. It, was it last yeah. year or two years ago? It was two right? years ago. It was okay. up in, that up was in fascinating. Omaha. you gotta, yeah. you got to share that again with, okay. with, with, uh, with the people. So, all right. So Friday night we got done. Uh, I had made some really great putts to to keep myself in the tournament make the cut first first major i've ever played in and uh so you know we're gearing up for for you know, what we're going to do saturday right. and my caddy and i are roaming together and we and we turn the lights out right and about 12 30 in the morning we both sat bolt upright because the whole hotel was shaking Okay, this was a brand new A-loft in Omaha, Nebraska. Got hit with a 90 mile an hour straight line wind and it blew the roof off. <laughs> so we were all called down into the into the basement, right? The sirens are going off, everything's right. crazy. And they, they brought us down to make sure that we weren't experiencing tornado, right? So we were down there for about 10 minutes and they're like, okay, everybody can go back to their rooms. Uh, so we're heading back to the rooms, right? And and we're on the I was on the fourth floor, and thankfully tucked around the kind of around the corner from the from the main hall, because there's water just pouring in, like and it's puddling on the floors. And I'm like, that's not good, you know? That's not yeah, normal, I would agree with that. right? So so anyway, we we go back into the room, and our area is not being affected or anything. So we're we're finally settled down a little bit, and we decided, okay, we're gonna go back to sleep. Lights have been out for maybe two minutes and the siren starts going off again. And then the uh, hotel, somebody from hotel staff came around and was knocking on all the doors saying, hey, we are we gotta evacuate. And it's like, okay. So by by the time we started getting out of there, yeah. it was 2.30 in the morning. Well, so, okay, so before we continue, when was your tea time the next day? Um, it wasn't late, <laughs> let's put it that way. Yeah. I was, it was probably around probably maybe nine ish or okay. something like that. Um, you know, I wasn't up at the, I wasn't at the top of the leaderboard, but I was, well, I was there. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so the other pieces to this, so we have to do this, we have to evacuate, right? So we've yeah. got to get all of our stuff together and I take my first load of stuff down to my car and I look over and my caddy's car has this massive piece of metal sticking out of it. So when the when the roof has come down, the winds must have been nuts because there was nobody parked next to him, thankfully, because I'm superstitious and I'd been playing well yeah. and I'd been parking in the same spot. Normally I would be like, oh yeah, I'll park next to next to Wilkie and that, that'll be, yeah, I didn't do that. And it's a good thing because my car would have been crushed. So anyway, it had come down around the backside of his car and then slammed into it. So two 
pieces of metal that were very, very long were lodged into his trunk and had gone in through the the rear uh, bumper yeah. and gone up into the metal of the trunk lid, yep, right? Sure. So wow. we had to wait for all kinds of stuff, obviously. There were, uh, they had fire trucks out to see what was going on, see whether the building was safe. I'm guessing they may have had to knock this thing down. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but we had to wait for somebody with, with a, you know, a metal cutter, you know, to be able to chop this this piece uh, out to get it out yeah. of his car. It was way too big to try and move. So, in the meantime, there's not much I can do. No, right. Yeah. So I'm I'm in the in my car trying to you know trying to lay there and the sirens are still everything's still going off and it's like, okay, I'm not getting anything out of this. So at about 5 a.m. I drove, picked up a couple energy drinks, and drove to the to the golf course, uh, which was amazing because at 520 by the time I got there player services was already there I mean I will I will I cannot fault the USGA for the way they run a golf tournament yeah. let me tell you what they run a heck of a show they were there and I walked in kind of bleary-eyed and whatever holding whatever monster energy or whatever I was drinking at that point and uh, they're like what are you doing here I'm like well my hotel basically doesn't exist anymore <laughs> uh, the roof came off and I had to leave and they're like, "Oh, I said, are we? I said, are we? Are we going to have a delay in, in in the morning?" And they're like, "Yes, and it'll be at least two hours." I said, "Perfect. If you need me, I'll be in the car in the in the parking lot." So I caught like maybe three hours okay. of sleep in the parking lot uh, before the before the third round. Ah, wow. It was awesome. It was what what a story. Well, that's the thing. Like, oh, you're gonna be able to yeah, tell that story you, forever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, that's it was, unreal. It was I do because I remember the uh, was the PJ Tour champions. I think social media yeah. accounts grabbed yeah. you and you. Oh man, it was great. Yeah, and, I, I came uh, off looking good there because because my attitude about it, the whole thing was great. Oh, I know. why wouldn't it have been? I mean, it was my first major. Oh, yeah, what am first I going to do? You make the cut. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, this is, how can something like this happen? Well, when you make a cut at a major, you expect it to go smoothly. Well, yeah, no, no. So it was uh, it was great. Uh, Omaha yeah. was fantastic. Everything about about that first major was just incredible. Yeah, loved well, every I'm, bit of it. I, I remember you re, you reunited with uh, Fluff. Uh, I remember, yeah, I remember you yeah, about that. Yeah, that, that was, was really great. cool. So yeah, um, it's it's cool that you know you've played in that back to back years and um, you know you're continuing to strive to do it and at that level that you're at and it, it's awesome to watch like this whole speed thing because I know like you mentioned you get to a certain age and. Typically, the athleticism yeah. is dwindling on, yeah. on most uh, yeah. human beings, but um, you are gaining speed and gaining. Yeah. Are you hitting the ball farther now than you really ever have before? Oh goodness, yes, yeah. yeah. So when I was on Corn Ferry Tour back in, well, it was nationwide back then in the mid two thousands, my average drive was two ninety. Okay. Uh, when I'm working on speed during the in the studio, I'm averaging. 310, 311. So, I mean, I'm significantly longer than, than what yeah. I was before. Um, yeah. Technology, look, technology is great. And this is yeah. why fitting such an incredibly great component of anybody's golf experience, you know, using the new technology, ways that the, the ball can come off the face right. faster to give people you know, a bit of the fountain of youth. It, it's That's a, you know, that's a term I use a lot. You know, people come in and they're a little bit older maybe and they're, they're yeah, I used to hit it 150, and now I only hit it, you know, 125. Well, guess what? We might, we might not get to 150, but we can certainly get right. a, a good bit, you mm -hmm. know, further down the line, and that that makes golf more fun. Yeah. Hey, USGA, that makes golf more fun. It makes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's it's one of the things that I love most about my job is yeah. that I can help people, you know, either improve on on where they are as they're coming up or get back some of what they had. Yeah, yeah, and it's that's one of those, um, I mean, it's, we, we preach, everybody you should get fit for clubs. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter what level you are, what skill level, yep. how, what experience you have. Yep. Um, getting fit will help you score better, and it's, yes. I don't know how else to describe it other than a fact. Um, yeah, it is, it's, 100%. The, it, I don't think anybody's ever come out of a proper club fitting playing worse than they than they went in. Right. And then the, the other part too is you can build a relationship with a fitter like Kevin or any of our fitters and you keep going back to them. If yeah. you have questions, someone like Kevin will answer it for you. Yeah. Um, if you need to get a tweak in the future, we can do that for you. I mean, it's... it's Swings a, change, right? Right. I mean, oh, I'm, I'm first one to be an example for that. So 
I got a fit in 2020 for irons. I had uh, irons that were flat, mm -hmm. and I corrected them to standard. Yep. And then I got fit actually uh, to get plus two or upright. And now I'm going. I'm pulling it left too much. So I've yeah, no, since then corrected back it back towards yeah. uh, towards neutral. So it's yeah. one of those things that happens, especially if you play a lot of golf. Yep. It's going to happen, but making sure the equipment dialed in matters. Yeah. So I think that's probably the the best way possible to to wrap this up. Sure. Uh, is Absolutely. just to uh, make sure golfers are getting fit for mm -hmm. their equipment. This is the right time of year to do it. You got the whole year coming up, especially if you're in the northern half of the country. You got a lot of golf coming up for you in 2023. Yeah. Uh, so you guys have grass. We are we are showing grass here in Minnesota. Uh, this is uh, the last couple of weeks. We finally have seen grass. Uh, it's been under snow the whole time. Yeah. And your first trip up here was an absolute nightmare. Uh, I don't for even weather. want to talk about it. Uh, but hey, you didn't bring any bad weather this time. So um, oh sure, blame it on me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm coming from an area that has had no winter, right? How am I bringing winter if yeah, I'm coming from a space? That I don't has know. No I don't know. The, the golf gods <laughs> speaketh, but they will. Yeah, but it's been good um, in Maryland this year. Kevin, thank you for joining Certainly. for the first episode of Swing Thoughts. Uh, not really sure how that went. We'll see what the viewers think yeah. or the listeners yeah. think. Uh, but we're going to keep doing more of them, and we're going to have you and more content as well coming up. So stay tuned for that, to that. Uh, everybody listening and watching. But um, great stuff here, Kevin. Good. Yeah, thanks, thanks for joining. Sir. Absolutely.